Hey everybody, how you doing? Welcome in. I'm gonna do a cooking, uh, not cooking channel, a cooking segment. Um, I'm gonna make something I've never made before called porcupine meatballs. They look amazing. My husband heard about them on one of the cooking shows and he asked me to make them. It's basically meatballs with rice stuffed inside them, but there's more liquid and they're cooked in a liquid. They're baked in the oven. So what I do whenever I try a new recipe, I see what my cookbooks say. I look at three different ones on YouTube and I try to find the short ones <laughs> and then I figure it out. So I've taken the best of everybody's um, suggestions and, but I'm definitely serving them over mashed potatoes because that seems to be how everyone talks about it. And I have a really cool trick to teach you about mashed potatoes. So I'm gonna actually film this in a few segments and ask my daughter to put it all together because I don't know how to do that. So here we go, are we ready? Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is I have the trio. You can use ground beef, ground pork, ground chicken, ground turkey, whatever you wanna use. I like this one, it's a mix of beef, pork, and veal. And our grocery store has it. So. I'm just going to open it for now. I'm not using it yet because this is something uh, my friend taught me. And you mix everything that's going to go into your meatballs or your meatloaf first until it's almost pasty. Then you mix it with your meat. It doesn't require as much condensing and it will make for a much more tender meatball or meatloaf. And you can do that for whatever you do. So I have... This is probably a pound and a half of meat, and I have a cup of basmati rice. Every recipe I found said you can use um, long grain rice or parboiled rice. If you're using a long grain, you need a little more liquid to cook with, and do not use instant rice. It doesn't work, it turns to mush, because the liquid inside um, the sauce is what's gonna cook the rice inside the meatball, and it's gonna bring in all that tomatoey goodness into the meatball. So here's one cup of rice. If I do anything with meatballs, I have to use this sauce. Worcestershire, sure, sure, sure. Um, I used to use Lee and Perrin's, but they can't guarantee gluten-free. This one says it's gluten-free, so I use our no-name version. And I just do that. I don't measure. It's like one, two, three. That's it. And I put it back. Now, today, I have everything laid out in front of me. And as the French chefs call it, I have maison plied. That's what it's called when you get it ready. Do I do that ahead of time? You know, no. I just go and grab and open and grab and open and grab and open. So in here is a teaspoon of salt, pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, basil, and oregano. Because those are my favorites. So I'm popping those in. Okay. Now, somebody said to put some, one recipe said put some tomato sauce in here. Some people said to put water. I had to use a cup of chicken broth yesterday. So I have this open container of chicken broth. I'm just gonna use it for flavor. If I had a bottle of wine and open in the fridge, I'd be using that, okay? And it's just a splash. I think they said like maybe half a cup. So yeah, that's about right, okay? And then, now, some recipes put in an egg. The three recipes I like the best didn't have an egg. So I'm just gonna mix that together because you're not making meatballs and tomato sauce to go over pasta, although you can put it over pasta if you want. The other thing I have to use, guys, sorry. Let me just find it in here. Is some Parmigiano Reggiano. And that, I just do this. Just enough, just to give some flavor. You don't want too much because it will absorb all of your sauce. Don't look in my fridge. <laughs> okay, so before we do that, I have a can of diced tomatoes and we use the no salt added so that I can control how much salt I put in. And I'm just putting it in this casserole dish. So I'm just putting that in. And then this is my passata or strained tomatoes. There, strength made. Muti. I love Muti. Okay. I'm not being paid by them. I'm not sponsored by them, but I love them. Okay. I, and the only reason I didn't use their diced tomatoes is I needed a big jar and the grocery store was out. 
Now, I have a hard time opening jars. There's two things you can use. This one, you put it on a jar and you use it. It works great. But I have recently found, and I got these on Amazon for 10 bucks, and it was like a pack of six, I think. It's just a rubber mat. But, voila. Love it. I am going to put just a splash in my meatballs. Just a splash. Could use ketchup if you wanted. Now I'm putting this in. Get in there. Waste not, want not. That's my mother's favorite saying. So, whatever liquid you're using, whether it's wine, water, coffee, um, broth, bourbon, shake it up. Tomatoes are freaking expensive. Use what you can. <laughs> so I'll get rid of that later. Okay. Now, none of the recipes said to season the sauce. Yeah, I'm never in my life not gonna season the sauce. So I have my quattro. Remember I showed you guys this. And just so you know, I have a spare one, brand new. And if I ever get to 5,000 subscribers, I'm gonna have to do a giveaway. This and some crystals and things I've used in my channel. Okay. So I'm just gonna sprinkle some salt, some pepper, garlic powder, onion powder. I don't want to use fresh garlic in this um, because it's going to cook in the oven for like an hour and a half and I just find that I don't like the taste when garlic cooks that long. So this is just basil and oregano. Oh, I gotta fill my oregano. Okay. Give that a stir. And like I said, I learn tips every day. And while watching the videos, I learned a great tip I want to teach, show you guys. The lady, when she covered, because this gets covered and put in the oven at 350 for an hour and a half, hour to an hour and a half. And um, she covers it with parchment first and then does her tin foil because she says she's found that tin foil can, um, the tomato can eat away at the tin foil and you can get leakage. And I have to tell you, I wrapped um, a tomato based meatloaf kind of thing and I did have that happen. So I'm not gonna do that anymore. So, well, my meat's a little frozen, so I'm gonna get cold hands guys, but that's okay. <laughs> and yeah, you can put on gloves to do this. You can um, use a fork. I know Ina Garnet says, Ina Garnet, 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 uses um, two forks to mix. She says you get um, much more tender meatball. Considering this is gonna cook in liquid for an hour and a half, I'm not overly concerned. I just want it mixed well, okay? It's really freaking cold. <laughs> so, and yeah, so I'm just gonna make the meatballs and talk you guys through the cooking process as we do this. Now, apparently this is a really um, popular dish in the Midwest in the States. I'm pretty sure I had, the, my mom made these for us. Um, you know, it was make anything that could go far. For us, there was six of us. So, you know, our meatloaf was half meatloaf, half cornflakes. So, <laughs> you know, anything that helps make it go further, that's what you do. So I think this is mixed pretty well. And the reason it's called porcupine meatballs is that the rice will cook inside it. So um, when you're, when you take it out, the rice is sticking out and it looks like a porcupine. So I like my meatballs about that size. And then you just put them in the tomato sauce like that. You see? And cooking is something that I love to do. And I encourage you guys to express yourself, to, experiment to, I mean, the worst that can happen, you order a pizza, you know, like it happens and it happens to me. What was it the other day I made? And it just was a flop, a complete and utter flop, but that happens, you know, and you make your meatballs as big or as small as you like. And 
that wasn't a burp. I, I swallowed a cough, okay? <laughs> and after I get this ready and put in the fridge, I will show you guys the trick of it I do for uh, mashed potatoes. And I like it because I don't have to babysit and I don't have to wonder. What I do is I bake my potatoes whole in the oven for two hours at 350. I find an hour never does it right, but I want them crispy skins too. And then I scoop out the potato, put it in the bowl. I'm saving the potato skins because Friday we're gonna celebrate the last day of school. And I asked my daughter what she'd like me to make her. And she said, pup food. She's 17, should I worry? Anyways, so we're going to have um, bacon wrapped jalapeno poppers along with um, potato skins. I'm gonna save the potato skins and we're gonna make those and it's gonna be amazing. And we'll also have probably chicken tenders in uh, buffalo sauce, you know? And in case you ever wanna know how to make buffalo sauce, you're getting a three for one here. So that made one, two, three, nine, 12, 14 meatballs, okay? I could probably make 15 if I wanted to, but I'm just, I know my family, I'm, they're each gonna steal one before dinner's ready. So, um, what was I saying? Oh, buffalo sauce. I used to make the biggest mistake. I used to add, I used to melt my butter and then add my Frank's because that's all buffalo sauce is. It's equal amounts of butter and Frank's red hot sauce and a teaspoon of garlic powder. But it would separate and I couldn't figure out what I was doing. And I was watching something, actually a Pampered Chef demo, and the lady said, no, no, you always start with your hot sauce and add the butter to it and then it incorporates and it won't separate. Who freaking knew, right? Okay, so now I'm just going to get my parchment paper right here, which fits perfectly on top of my meatballs. And you guys know that if you're ever cooking something with tinfoil and it's got a cheesy top, then you, um, and yes, don't worry, I will be washing this down. Use a little bit of spray, ham or, or olive oil, whatever, to um, wash it so that it won't stick to the cheese and you pull off the tinfoil and all your cheese comes with you. I've had quite a few meatballs that have meatloaf. No, sorry. I've had quite a few lasagnas that have done that. So that's ready to go. I will put that in the fridge in just a moment. So yeah, what I will do, I'll take my potatoes out scoop them into the, a bowl, a clean bowl, and I add milk, butter. Uh, we use lactose-free right now for both. I also will sometimes add in a spoonful of Greek yogurt or mayonnaise or sour cream, depending what you like. My daughter and I love a spoonful of cream cheese in it too. Um, my husband's not overly fussy, so fine for him, I won't this time. And then I get my blender. Now I have uh, a ricer, I have a KitchenAid, I have a food processor. I also have a hand masher. My favorite way is my electric mixer. I know I said blender, but I meant my electric mixer. And I just mix my potatoes together. And this way I can make them anytime during the day, you know? And I put them in a small pan, make them in the morning, put them in a small pan, stick them in your oven, when you're ready to cook and the oven's going to be on 350 so for the last half hour i'll pop them in sometimes i will dot butter on the top sometimes i'll sprinkle cheese i've also done broccoli and cheese you can do bacon and cheese whatever you want to put in your mashed potatoes soup them up your way guys and they'll be delicious trust me but save the potato skins just add a little grated cheese add in some um bacon bits tomato pieces, um, whatever you like, jalapeno pits, whatever you want, sprinkle the cheese and bake them in the oven till they're crispy and make sure you oil the skins. Delicious, delicious, delicious. The other thing I'm gonna tell you how to make too, and then this way the only part I have to add is the finished products to show you guys the plate, is how I make my jalapeno poppers. So I let my cream cheese come to room temperature. I put it in a bowl. I'm going to add to it some shredded cheese. There's no measurements. It's what you like and how many poppers you want to make. 
Uh, to that, I also add some Worcestershire sauce, some green onions or chives, depending what I have on hand, and I mix them. Just mix it all up. I also, oh, and some lemon zest. Lemon zest or lemon juice. I like adding both, so I do that too. I like that little kick it gives it. And salt and pepper. Mix it all up. That's your filling. You take your jalapeno poppers, you cut them lengthwise, scoop out the seeds. If you're liking spicy food, leave the seeds in. I don't. Fill your blah, blah, blahs, things. Get your bacon, stretch it out, and wrap it around. Now, you can toothpick it, or what I do is I just cook it with the bacon wrap seam side down if I have enough. But if you really stretched it, it's gonna shrink as it cooks, so use the toothpick. Pop it in your oven. I cook it at 375 for approximately 20 minutes till you get your bacon what you like. What I also will do, if I have some barbecue sauce in the fridge or some hot pepper jelly is good too, just heat a little bit glaze that bacon, pop it back in the oven for five minutes, take them out, voila, there you go. So I hope you guys like this. Like I said, I will show you the finished product and we'll see how it goes. Okay, see you in just a minute. Okay guys, so here's the finished product. Here are the meatballs. Oops, that's the parchment, don't get excited. There we go. And voila, they do look like porcupines because the rice is sticking out but I'll cover those sauce and here's the mashed potatoes oh they look good so it turned out I'll let you know if it's if it doesn't taste good but if you don't hear from me it tastes good <laughs> 